I got into radio because I wanted to sit in a little room by myself and tell stories. I didn't get into it to be famous, let alone specialty TV famous 30 years later. The whole idea was I wanted to perform, but I'm a remarkable introvert. And so the idea of sitting alone in a room telling stories where others will hear it, but you don't have to see them is perfect for me. The secret to radio success is, well, frankly, nepotism. I had an uncle who was a major DJ in Toronto, and he got me my first job in radio at 17. I spent six years at 680 News, and at my 10th anniversary in radio broadcasting, I bought myself a classic icon of the industry, an Olsen M102 microphone, just as a yay me. Well, the next year I got into TV, and from there I found myself at Report on Business Television, BNN, and CTV News. And I built a career from that because that was the show. CTV in Toronto, there's no bigger television operation in the country. The worst advice I ever got was from the DJs who told me, don't get a piece of paper, just get out there and get the experience, which was critical when you're starting out. But that's not a long-term solution. And I knew I needed that paper. And when I went to Humber and got it, my first on-air job, I asked the person who gave me that job, would you have given it to me if I hadn't have gone to Humber? The answer was no way. So I knew I had made the right decision. The great thing about the Humber program is that because I was already in radio as, as a teenager, I saw where the program had strengths and where it had weaknesses. And it didn't really have any weaknesses that I was aware of because I recognized that all the instructors that I was being taught by were people from the industry. They knew what they were talking about. And I kind of had a, a fact check ongoing in the back of my head going the whole way. George Stravolopoulos does return my tweets from time to time. Uh, he was perhaps the most famous example of a classmate. And the thing about George was none of us thought that guy was going anywhere. He had a gruff voice, he was very unusual. But the strength of that particular character is that he had drive and he never stopped working. He was always on the go. And that just reinforced to me that regardless as to whether or not you've got the perfect radio voice, if you've got the drive and the energy and you don't take no for an answer, you can succeed. Experience something that you're uncomfortable with. Go in a direction you didn't necessarily expect, explore. And that's exactly what I did. After a couple of years in music radio, I had an opportunity for an on-air position in news in small town Ontario. I took them up on that opportunity and it was a remarkable experience. After spending four years behind the scenes in radio, I came to develop a strong appreciation for the fact that this is a team sport. There is no star without everyone else involved. So we launched this Geeks and Beats podcast with a man that I had so much admiration for. When I was in Humber going to the radio school, Alan Cross is now a friend of mine. He's a colleague. We built this Geeks and Beats podcast together. And the great thing about it is that I'm in charge. I don't have a boss telling me what to do here. I'm Michael Hainsworth, and I'm a proud Humber grad.